What's going on everybody? Gunner here and I want to share with you guys what has been really my favorite entry level streamer rod that I've, I've had the opportunity to throw. Um, and before we tell you the name, before I tell you the name, because uh, as soon as I tell it to you, a few of you are going to tune out real quick and I want to I want to salvage that as much as possible. So this is totally a multi-species rod. It's only offered in a 7, 8, and 9 weight and it's purpose driven. It's purposefully built for the art of throwing streamers. Um, so if you're a trout guy, listen up. If you drift rivers out west for browns, the seven weight is totally up your alley. Northwood smallmouth, dead on. Eight weight is a great pike rod, and the nine weight even makes a great musky stick. Um, so this is the St. Croix Mojo Bass. Mojo Bass Fly, I should clarify, because Mojo Bass is also a series of rods. But it's the Mojo Bass Fly Rod. Um, this is seven foot, 11 inches. And that is the only thing that is really bass about it. So if you, uh, I don't know if the rules are still the same, but back in the day, um, they had a rod cap for the length you could fish a rod in a bass tournament, which was eight feet. So fly rod companies came out with a bunch of seven foot 11 models. Uh, most companies have them. Um, and St. Croix is an absolute cannon. This thing is a dream to cast, nice, stiff butt. You got power in this rod, has a moderate progressive uh, action to it, so it's not super, super fast. Uh, has a lot of feel to it, has a little bit of give in the midsection, absorbing shock from big flies. It's a big fly rod. It absorbs shock from big flies. Being a foot shorter, I actually find it a little bit easier to manage, a little bit easier on my wrist, a little bit more control, um, and being a foot shorter, it's a little bit more responsive. It's a little bit more, uh, it, it's just closer. It's, it's, it's almost more intuitive. And the crazy thing about it is when you think of a really ultra fast rod, you think they're very sensitive. I mean, it's true. And this is a moderate fast rod, which is a little bit easier on your wrist, but it's ultra light. It's super light. If you pick this rod up, it almost feels like you're holding a spin rod, like a seven foot, you know, fast action, I don't know, drop shot rod. Like it's extremely thinly tapered. And what you have to understand about a light rod is a light rod, uh, basically, well, I should say a heavy rod, uh, per se, because we're going to talk about the opposite of this. A heavy rod absorbs information. It absorbs vibrations, and it absorbs really everything that's happening between your, your hand and your rod tip. Light rods, it's not that they're easier on your arm or they're easier on your shoulder or you don't get less fatigue. I don't really think that's it at all. I think there's just more sensitivity. It's a more intimate uh, experience with your rod because you're not losing information due to a rod being over-designed. Um, so these rods are super light, really sensitive, which is really cool when you pair it with a moderate action because it has a little bit more give and a little bit more uh, kind of authority over a fat fly. You're not getting like tip shock uh, when you're throwing a really fast action rod in a big flight. Sometimes you get tip shock and it's, it's oftentimes uncomfortable to cast. Um, so this is, I just love this rod and for the price point, it's almost at a level that scares people. Um, it's, I think it's a $150 rod. And something I want to talk about is I had someone uh, send me a, a, an email one time and they were debating to get the Mojo Bass or uh, another company's model, which was quite a bit more expensive. And they were actually going to have to sell their five weight to buy the more expensive rod. And I looked at them and I was like, two rods are better than one. Like, I don't care how expensive that eight weight is. It's never going to be able to do what your five weight can do. And no matter how expensive your five weight is, it's never going to be able to do what an eight weight can do. And you have to understand, I have been in the fly fishing, uh, well, I've been in the industry now for like four out of the past five years, um, and I've been a fly fisherman, I don't know, 12, 13, 14 years. I think I've only ever fished entry-level rods until this year, like 12 years of entry-level rods, you guys. And what you have to understand is an entry-level rod, <laughs> what you have to understand, you guys, is fly fishing is kind of like golf, and it's like... You could play an entire round of golf, let's say nine holes, um, with a six iron. You could do it. You could tee off with a six, hit your fairways with a six, you could bump and run with a six for your chips, you could putt with a six. You could get away with a six iron for everything. But they make a driver and a putter and a wedge for a reason. And the same thing goes with fly fishing. It's like, if you're getting into this sport, if you're dabbling with predators, you know, throwing for pike and muskie and smallmouth and trout, you want to get into streamer fishing, but you also want to do some bluegill and you want to do some, I don't know, trout and nymph and dry fly fish, I would rather someone get into the sport and have a four weight and a five weight and a seven and a nine because you're going to be able to do it all. 
e even if it's just $150 rods, you'll be able to do it all. If you come in and you drop $800 on a five weight, at the end of the day, it's still just a five weight. <laughs> it's never gonna be able to do what a seven weight or a nine weight could do, even at an entry level. And it's so important that you have the right tool for the job, even if it's not the most expensive tool, it's still the right tool. It's still the right tool. Uh, Cause this, like $150 is almost scary uh, for a fly fisherman because you walk in the shop and everything's 300, 400, 500, a thousand dollars. It's absolutely crazy. Um, and this is an absolute stick. It's a cannon, it's sensitive, it's light, it's responsive, it throws big flies. Um, and if you got this in a seven and a nine, talk about brown trout, smallmouth, pike, and muskie, you'd be decked, you'd be loaded. And you're doing it for the price that most people spend on one rod or even half a rod and you'd have two of them you could do it all so i just want to share that with you guys um and if you've made it this far congratulations because you're about to watch a really cool casting demo um i had an idea that i wanted to share and we're going to go from a beginner how to cast uh, just how i treat a beginner and we're going to very quickly take that to an intermediate level and very quickly take it to an advanced level and i'm not an advanced caster um, but i understand the theory behind it and once in a while i get lucky and it feels really cool so uh Let's do that, but that is the St. Croix Mojo Bass, and uh, let's show you guys how to cast a fly rod. So if I were to teach somebody how to cast, first thing I'd probably do is teach them how to water load, and all you're gonna do is your forward cast, you're gonna let it land in the water, and your back cast, it lands in the water. And it's important that you do it in both directions because it's teaching someone to have a very uh, powerful and aggressive backstroke. And obviously what you have to understand about fly fishing is you can't go forward unless you go back. Uh, you have to have all that line back behind you straight so that you can load your rod against something. And, and most of the time you're going to teach someone how to water load like that. And the goal is to simply stop the fly from landing on the water. And it's a very relaxed stroke. It's all visual most of the time. And you're not really working on feel. Everything's a visual cue. Just don't let it land on the water. And that's really simple beginning casting, right? To take it to an intermediate level, all the casting becomes something that you feel. And what you feel is you feel your line straighten out and dunk, tug on your line or on your rod tip and it starts to fall and you begin your forward stroke. And, and you can understand what the feeling is because you can see it in your forward stroke. You can see it, feel it, feel it, feel it, feel it, right? I can feel that energy. What happens is you're, you're, you have all this momentum in that line that's straightening out and boom, tugging on your rod and starting to fall. Now what that energy is doing is it's being transferred from the line to your rod to your hand. And that means it's being wasted. And what you have to understand, and this is how you take it from a very simple beginner, intermediate uh, kind of context to an advanced context. And so your casting timing, if you want to be at a, a more advanced level, the goal isn't actually to wait until your loop releases. That means you waited a split second too long. The goal is to actually start your forward cast the moment your back cast straightens out. So instead of that energy being felt down the rod tip, the, through the rod, through your hand, the moment it goes doom, it's also being pulled forward. The very moment that that line is going to jerk on the rod is the very moment you begin your forward stroke and obviously you don't want to be uh, premature because all you're gonna do is pull against your loop and it's gonna snap open and you're moving the rod tip against air which doesn't have any mass against it and you're gonna get a really aggressive ugly tailing loop and your cast will fall apart so being late is better than being early and I'm trying to untangle a big knot right now <laughs> being late is better than being early right if you're late the only thing that happens is you're gonna feel it and you're gonna have less energy in your cast. Um, but if you time it right, you anticipate that loop opening and you use that boom as the start of your cast, you're not actually gonna feel it anymore, but you're gonna capture that energy at the start of your cast, move forward, haul right at the end, and you're, the line's literally just gonna rip off the rod. It feels so good when you get it right. And what happens, and you've probably done this multiple times, you didn't know what happened, but that's what happened. If you cast and you cast and you're like, oh, that was a good cast and oh, that was a good cast and boom, what oh, you see, that was a rocket. Like pinpoint accuracy set, like the line's just ripping out of the rod. You're like, what'd I do, right? You captured that energy, that's what you did. Your timing was just perfect that your forward stroke, boom, right when that strained out, you caught 100% of the energy that was in the line, transferred it to the rod, began your stroke, boom. 
released it. So that's the advanced thing that it's it's really easy. It's it's just critical to be aware of because for the past I don't know however many you know three years I've been able to feel a cast. Literally, it's been three years I've been able to feel a cast, which sounds pretty pathetic given the amount of time I've been fishing. But and I've always thought that was ideal. Like I can feel it. It feels good. I can feel it. My timing must be right. But if I anticipate it. I have so much more power. If you just anticipate it a hair, you have so much more power. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Again, that is the Mojo Bass fly rod from St. Croix. Absolutely epic entry level streamer rod. Uh, and I, I mean, I would not hesitate to have an arsenal of these guys. So thanks for watching.